night, 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 and it's dirty and sweet. Sorry, weird move today. Um, okay, so, the cult fan favorite unisex scent. Bond number nine, New Harlem. Um, as far as the bottle itself goes, Eh, not a big fan of the design of the bottles. Um, I don't know, it just kind of reminds me of a cross between uh, Teenage Girl and, and Surfer Boy in the design, the big star thing, I don't know, like, totally radical dude, you know, I don't know. Uh, and the, the plastic top, it would be better, I think, if it were glass. It's just, I don't know, I'm not, not a big fan, but... Um, the scent itself, what I get, maple syrup, absolutely, like waffles, pancakes, that's what I get from this. It's, it's um, a heavy, sweet, syrupy smell. It's toned down a little bit by, they add um, some lavender and bergamot which I pick up on, um, to tone down that heavy syrupy sweetness a little bit, um, but for the most part I get breakfast, uh, when I smell this. If there were some bacon in there, it would just, it would totally be breakfast. Um, a little bit of background on Harlem, which is kind of interesting, it was founded by Dutch settlers in 1658. Uh, and in 1765, it was a small agricultural town. Bond number nine, um, interestingly enough, actually kept the original spelling because there was a Dutch town uh, known as New Harlem in the Netherlands and spelled with two A's, so Bond number nine kept the H-A-A-R-L-E-M spelling when they developed the fragrance. Uh, what I think of when I smell this, um, kind of like a dark intimate cafe, I guess. You get the coffee notes there, so there's some coffee brewing in the background. Um, the, the sweetness is there. Maybe there's some jazz playing in the background. It was created by Maurice Roussel and, uh, Loris Rahm. And the notes are coffee, uh, vanilla, tonka, cedarwood, patchouli, lavender, and bergamot. Honestly, I have a love-hate relationship with this one. Some days I love it, other days it's just a little bit too syrupy for me. And the odd thing about it that kind of puts me off um, on the days that I don't care for it is that lavender bergamot kind of like cedar woody twist that it has. It's like somebody took a bowl of, of um, log cabin pancake syrup and then dump some flowers in the middle. And I know some days I like that because it tones down the sweetness. Other days it just seems like an odd combination to me. So um, it can be a great scent. I, I would say definitely um, fall and winter. It's got good projection. I definitely smell it on myself. You wouldn't want to do more than I would say a couple sprays of this one. Anything around your nose would probably be a little bit too heavy, um, so maybe one to the back of the neck, one on each wrist. Um, the longevity is excellent. After a whole day, I can still smell it toward evening. Um, I just think for the right occasion, it's great. But as far as uh, like a summer um, type of wear, definitely not. I think it would end up being um, cloying, uh, but for winter, fall, uh, early spring, excellent. Um, it would be good for an evening out, I think. Uh, <clears throat> age range, probably teen all, on up. Uh, the prices are, it does get a little bit pricey. Um, again, it is a niche house. Um, some of their other fragrances are, uh, what else do they make? Chinatown, which is supposed to be um, an awesome scent, uh, leans more toward um, the female side. Uh, Fire Island is another one, the Hamptons, um, all based around uh, cities and neighborhoods 
in New York. Coney Island's another one that I would be interested to try and haven't tried previously. So if you guys have, uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know what your favorite Bond scent is. I'd be interested in knowing. Uh, so that's my review on Bond number nine. Have a good day, guys.